I must admit that few things frustrate me more in the world of design than artwork that is hung the wrong way. It's really not that difficult once you know the rules. And yes, when hanging artwork, there are really good rules and guidelines to help you. So in this lecture, we talk about what those rules and guidelines are for both single pieces of artwork as well as collages. You'll get an opportunity to look at some examples of artwork hung the wrong way so you can spot the problems. And finally, I'll discuss when you should simply consider leaving your wall free of artwork. So let's get to it. First, here are the rules and guidelines to get you started. The first rule of hanging artwork is to match the shape of the artwork to the shape of the wall space to create harmony. For example, here we have a rectangular picture in a portrait orientation hanging in a portrait-shaped rectangular space. This is one of my projects, and the wall ends here. So again, we have a portrait-oriented rectangular picture in a portrait-shaped rectangular space. Now, what's the shape of the space above the sofa? Right, it's a rectangular space, but this time in a landscape orientation, so it will look best to hang artwork that is also in a landscape orientation. Now, this space is a bit trickier. What shape picture do you think would look best here? If the bookcase and tall floor lamp weren't there, you'd simply choose a piece of artwork that is roughly two-thirds length of the sofa. I'll talk more about this two-thirds rule in a bit, but you can't ignore the bookcase and the floor lamp, and in fact, these become the natural boundaries that help to define the shape of the artwork hanging space. Can you see the shape now? You got it right if you said a square. Do you see how this artwork works so well in this space? Great! Now, let's talk about how high to hang your artwork, as I find that hanging artwork too high is one of the most common mistakes I see. Artwork of nearly any size should be hung so that the vertical center of the piece is between 60 to 66 inches from the finished floor. Why? Because that is eye level for the majority of people. Why is it a range? Because not all artwork is the same size. Not all ceiling heights are the same height, and sometimes you are hanging artwork over a sofa or a console table, so you may have to go up higher than you normally would if there were not a piece of furniture beneath it. So 60 to 66 inches gives you a starting point, and you'll have to decide what ultimately looks right in your space. Said another way, the 60 to 66 inch range is the science of hanging artwork, and figuring out the perfect height within that range is the art of hanging artwork. The 60 to 66 inch rule is also used for collages or multiple pieces of artwork hung as a single installation. The midpoint of the collage should also be at 60 to 66 inches. So some pieces may be particularly lower or higher than that, but when hung in a grouping, provided that the center line of the collage is at 60 to 66 inches, you are in good shape. The other rule with collages is to hang your pieces roughly two inches apart from each other. You can go as much as three inches, but I wouldn't go more than that unless you are hanging only two to three pieces of artwork together. In that case, you can hang them a bit further apart, but usually no more than about five inches or they lose their cohesiveness and they start feeling disconnected. The best way to determine a collage layout is on the ground. Specifically, I always lay my pieces out on the ground to begin with as it allows me to move pieces around till my heart's content and I find the perfect arrangement without damaging the walls. If there is a piece that is the largest, I usually place it near the middle of the collage and then work outwards. Once I'm done, I'll snap a picture of the collage with my phone before I begin hanging them. I always have my hanger hang the middle piece first so I can center it on the wall or in the space and then work outwards from there. When hanging a collage along a staircase, have the bottom of the collage follow the line of the staircase rail. My final rule for collages is this. A collage looks best when it has a unifying theme. That can be the same color frame for every piece of artwork, or the same type of artwork, such as black and white photography. Don't forget that collages can consist of not only artwork, but other decorative items such as wall sculptures, mirrors, or basket. They should just fit the style or theme that you are going for. Now I want to get back to the two-thirds rule I spoke about earlier. This rule applies when we are hanging artwork over a piece of furniture, such as a sofa, a bed, or a case good item, like a console table, an end table, a nightstand, a dresser, etc. Artwork almost always looks best when it is roughly two-thirds the length of the item directly beneath it. It's that rule of thirds that is so heavily used in design. 
You also want to hang the artwork between six to 10 inches over the top of the item so that it feels connected with the furniture piece below it. Okay, so that makes sense. But what do you do when the piece of artwork is two thirds length of the item over it, but when you hang it six to 10 inches over the furniture, it feels too low like we see here because the center of the picture is nowhere near 60 to 66 inches from the finished floor. Any ideas? Well, here are three good options. First, you could vertically stack some artwork over it. Second, you could place the artwork on the nightstand and lean it back against the wall. This allows you to use the artwork in your vignette, but now it looks properly scaled to the space. Third, you could simply look for a taller piece of artwork so that it's more proportional to the space and then find another home for the other piece of artwork. Now, you may be wondering with all of these rules and guidelines, which one takes precedent when they are in conflict? For example, in this picture, we have the space over the fireplace that's just begging for some artwork. If you look at the shape of the space between the two sconces, it's rectangular. But a large rectangular picture does not look right here. Why is that? Because you cannot ignore the mantle, which is directly beneath it. If you ignore the sconces and use the two third rule, you'd end up with something like this, which looks much better. So if the artwork is being placed directly over a piece of furniture or something comparable, such as a fireplace mantle, the two third rule takes precedent. Now that you know the rules and guidelines we designers used, let's look at some pictures of artwork that are not quite right to see if you can spot the problems. This first example is a fairly easy one. What problems do you see? I see three obvious problems. First, the spacing between the pictures is much too inconsistent. Second, the staggered height just doesn't look right. It's too haphazard and chaotic. Because the sizes are all the same, a staggered collage won't work well. So it will look much more pulled together to simply hang them in a straight line a couple of inches apart. Third, the wall clock doesn't work here. It could work in the collage if they had different sized images, but it feels out of scale with the artwork. Let's look at our next picture where we have a piece of artwork over a sofa. Again, what problems do you see? First, it's hung too high. It's definitely not six to 10 inches over the back of the sofa. It's also not wide enough to meet our two thirds rule, which creates our third problem. If you lower it to 10 inches over the sofa, the center of the picture likely won't be at the right height because it's not tall enough. It's simply too small for this space. Now let's look at our third picture. This one is better, right? It's definitely hung within 10 inches of the back of the sofa, and it's tall enough that the midpoint should be in that 60 to 66 inch range, but it's not quite wide enough in my opinion, but just slightly. If we could widen it just a little bit like this, we would have our ideal proportions. Can you see the difference? Great. Now let's talk about when you should consider leaving a wall or walls free of artwork. Often this technique is used when you want to create some negative space in the room, which is a deliberate design choice, particularly in styles like contemporary and modern French. The idea is that you are leaving an area of the room, such as a wall, a corner, etc., empty in order to create some breathing room in a design, particularly when you don't want to distract from the focal point in a room. For example, in this dining room, leaving the wall free of artwork behind this eye catching light fixture keeps all of the attention on this fixture. So if you have a stunning light fixture in a dining room, you may want to skip the artwork behind it. Here's another excellent example of negative space. We have this beautiful view out of the windows surrounding this blank wall. So by leaving the wall free of artwork, your view is naturally drawn to the outdoors with nothing competing for your attention. Now let's contrast that with this room where we have two small pictures hung in between two windows. I really think this is a design miss. First, because the space between the two windows is not that large, so you really don't need anything here. And second, because the artwork is acting as a distraction to another beautiful view outside. Artwork is simply not needed here. It's not wrong per se. I just think this design would be better without it. Along the same lines, another reason you may want to leave some walls bare is when you have a strong focal point wall like we have in this bedroom. By leaving the walls on either side free of artwork, you are focusing the attention completely on this piece of artwork and the paneling behind it. Other reasons to include leaving your walls free of artwork is when you are using another type of wall treatment on your wall already, such as beautiful wallpaper, brick, stone tile, or panel molding. 
This doesn't mean you can't layer artwork over a wall treatment, because of course you can, but just know that you don't have to. Speaking of panel molding, sometimes the space within picture frame molding is just screaming for a piece of artwork like we see here. Not only is a center frame so much bigger than the surrounding frames, but you even have the space flanked by two sconces. Doesn't this feel so much better now? I know I feel better. Now let's contrast that example with this room. Again, we have a large picture frame molding right behind the bed, but we don't need artwork here. Why is that? Because the light fixture is a star of the show and the molding simply serves to help highlight this very cool fixture. The fixture acts in place of the artwork. Do you see the difference? Excellent. Okay, now what about when we have used paint to create a full or partial accent wall like we see here? Do you think artwork should be hung over this bed? You certainly could, but it's really not needed. The architectural interest of the molding combined with the dramatic color change creates enough visual interest that artwork really isn't needed, and in fact would distract from this very clean aesthetic and the harmony that is created with the winning combination of the dark gray focal wall, the dark gray drapes, and the dark gray bedding. So to recap, match the shape of your artwork to the shape of the wall space. Hang a single piece or a collage so that the center line is between 60 to 66 inches from the finished floor. Keep collage pieces within two to three inches of each other. Ensure your collages have a unifying theme. When hanging over a piece of furniture, use a single piece of artwork or collage that is two thirds the length of the item beneath it and hung six to 10 inches above the furniture. And don't be afraid to leave a wall or two bare when it makes sense to do so.